Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving stationary waves, i.e. standing waves. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says to explain briefly how stationary, i.e. standing waves are produced, include the terms nodes and antinodes in your answer. Well remember from the notes that stationary waves are formed by the constructive interference of two waves of the same frequency and amplitude travelling in opposite directions. We say that when a wave is reflected from a boundary and the reflected wave is inverted, the two waves will interfere. And if you were to draw a diagram it would look something like this, where you've got your fixed boundary on the right hand side, you've got this instant wave which is this solid black line which then reflects off the boundary shown by this dashed line here and you'll see that the reflected wave is completely inverted. So this creates the points called nodes which are points of zero amplitude and then we've got the antinodes which are points of maximum amplitude. So there's your nodes there separated by half a wavelength and there's your antinodes again separated by half a wavelength. Question 2 says nodes are 12 centimetres apart in a standing wave. State the wavelength of the interfering waves. Well to answer this we just need to know the key rule for the distance between nodes and antinodes and this rule is that nodes are separated by half a wavelength. So that means we can write that lambda over 2 half a wavelength is equal to 12 centimetres and therefore to get the wavelength on its own we just need to multiply both sides by 2. So we have lambda is equal to 24 centimetres. Question 3 says the diagram shows the distance between several nodes in a standing wave. So the points labelled N are our positions of the nodes and you can see the distance between this node and this node is 210 millimetres. It then says calculate the wavelength of the wave. Well we already know that nodes are separated by half a wavelength and we can therefore work out how many half wavelengths or full wavelengths we have here in the space. So to go from this node to this node that's half a wavelength and another half wavelength would be one full wavelength. We then have another half and another half which would be two full wavelengths and then another half and another half. So that's three full wavelengths is equal to 210 millimetres. So we could say three lambda is equal to 210 millimetres and then to find lambda on its own we just need to divide both sides by three. So we get lambda equals 210 over three which is the same as 70 millimetres. Lastly, question 4 says a student sets up a stationary sound wave using the following apparatus. So we have a loudspeaker connected to a signal generator, then a microphone and a metal reflector. Then says the microphone is used to find the position of the nodes when the reflected wave interferes with the instant wave. The student notes the following results. So the frequency of the sound is given as 700 plus or minus 50 hertz and the distance between two adjacent nodes is given as 25 plus or minus 2 centimetres. A part 1 says using this data calculate the speed of sound. Well remember the nodes are separated by half a wavelength so we need to find the wavelength and then calculate the speed. So we know the value for the distance between adjacent nodes is 25 centimetres so we can say that lambda over 2 half a wavelength is equal to 25 centimetres which equals 0.25 metres and therefore the wavelength lambda is 2 times that which is 0.5 metres. And then we can calculate the speed, so we're trying to find V here. We know that the frequency F is 700 hertz, just ignoring the uncertainties for now, and the wavelength lambda is 0.5 meters. So writing down our equation relating speed, frequency and wavelength, we have V equals F lambda. Substituting in the numbers gives 700 times 0.5, and if you put that into your calculator or just do it in your head, you should get a value of 350 meters per second. Part 2 says using this data calculate the absolute uncertainty in the calculated value for the speed of sound. Well the strategy here is that we're going to use percentage uncertainties and then convert back to absolute uncertainties. And remember we were given uncertainties in the frequency value and in the value for the distance between adjacent nodes. Well to find the percentage uncertainty in the frequency we can say this is equal to 50 divided by 700. That's the absolute uncertainty divided by the reading for frequency times 100. And if you put that into your calculator you should get plus or minus 7.14% to two decimal places. And then to find the percentage uncertainty in the wavelength this will be the same as the percentage uncertainty in the distance between adjacent nodes because we just used that value to find the wavelength in A part 1. So we can say the percentage uncertainty in the wavelength is equal to 2 divided by 25 times 100. Again that's just doing the absolute uncertainty in the distance divided by the measurement of the distance 25 times 100 and if you put that into your calculator you should get plus or minus 8%. And we can say that since V equals F lambda then the percentage uncertainty in the speed is going to equal the square root of the percentage uncertainty in the frequency squared plus the percentage uncertainty in the wavelength squared. And that means we sub in our two percentages here, so we have the square root of 7.14 squared plus 8 squared. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get plus or minus 10.7% to one decimal place. And if we want to find the absolute uncertainty in the value for the speed, right now we've got it in terms of a percentage uncertainty, so we just need to take that percentage of the value of the speed. 
So we can say that the uncertainty in the speed is equal to 10.7% of V, which is equal to 10.7% of 350, because that's our value for the speed that we calculated earlier. And that's the same as dividing this by 100 and timesing it by 350. So we get 0 0.107 times 350. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of plus or minus 37.5 meters per second, which we could round to one significant figure, which would give us plus or minus 40 meters per second. Lastly, part B says, how could the student reduce the absolute uncertainty in the calculated value for the speed of sound? Well, what they could do is measure the distance between a greater number of nodes, for example, five, rather than just two. And the reason for this is that the uncertainty will still be plus or minus two centimeters from the reading uncertainty, but when converted into a percentage uncertainty, the percentage uncertainty in distance and therefore wavelength will be reduced. And we can think about this by looking back at our data, because if our reading uncertainty here, the plus or minus two centimeters stays the same for the measuring instrument that we're using to measure the distance, then if we're measuring over a greater number of nodes, then this first value, the measurement here will be greater. So let's say we got a value of 50 centimeters instead, then it would be 50 plus or minus two centimeters still. And if we found the percentage uncertainty in the distance value and therefore the wavelength, then that would give us 2 divided by 50 times 100 rather than 2 divided by 25 times 100. And 2 divided by 50 times 100 is going to give us a much smaller percentage uncertainty than 2 divided by 25 times 100. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.